There's one big problem on church websites that I see again and again, and it's, and it has nothing to do with design. It reminds me of growing up at our church. We had a Korean speaking neighborhood behind the church. And of course we love these people. We couldn't talk to them. We couldn't invite them to church because they would have no idea what's going on. Now, yes, God can surpass. Stop looking at the uh, uh, exceptions, all right, and start looking at the rules, right? We don't say, well, uh, so-and-so accepted Christ on his deathbed and he's in heaven, so I'll just accept Christ on my deathbed. But you pastor, you're not going to be like, okay, sounds good. You'll be like, no, dude, that's not how it works, okay? So, yeah, we can point to the exceptions, language, tongues, whatever. That's not the rule. Here's the rule. Uh, so we couldn't invite the, the Korean speaking people to our church cause they wouldn't really be served and they wouldn't definitely wouldn't hear the gospel cause they couldn't understand it. So we did our best with them, but praise God, a Korean church opened up and planted like two blocks down the road. And we were like, Hey, go to that church. Like we had like outreaches to go tell those people about the church, right? We wanted to support that because they spoke their language. We didn't speak their language. And in the same way, when you have your church website, sure, you can have parts for members. That's fine. But the main purpose of your website is to be found by people that are looking for a church to educate people and inspire people on why they need church and why they need your church. Okay. Because I don't want to just tell people to go to church. There's plenty of false prophets and bad teachers and wolves in sheep's clothing that call themselves a church. Okay. You want them, if you're a gospel centered, Christ focused church, you want them to go to your church, okay? Um, and to do that, you need to speak a language that they understand, all right? If you do speak a language that we understand on our side of the door, you're going to get more people that are already in the house of God. You're just getting transplants. If you want to get people from outside the house, you got to speak a language that they understand. A good example of this is my own church right now. Uh, we used to say, we used to say uh, on our home on our homepage, uh, we're a 21st century church uh, doing church like the first. I don't even remember what it was. It was so confusing. Doing church in a 21st century way, modeled after the first century way. I don't know. It was so confusing. I was like, what the heck does this mean? I don't even understand it. I'm a Christian. We changed it. You know what it says now? We are a church that meets in the home. <laughs> Learn how to share Jesus with your friends and family and make disciples like you're called to do. Um, it's so simple, right? We're a 21st century church doing church in the first century way. Oh, what does that mean, right? I don't even remember. Uh, but we are a church that meets in the home. It's boring, but it's clear, it's effective, and it's obviously memorable. Um, one thing you need to look at, a data point that it's one of our top data points that we check ever uh, on every month is the bounce rate, okay? The bounce rate is how many people are coming to your website and leaving without taking any action. And if you have a high bounce rate that's above 40%, that means that almost half of all people come to your website, they see whatever you have on the front page of your website and they immediately bounce out. And most of the time, I almost wanna say all the time, but I'm not ever, you're never supposed to do absolutes like that, right? Uh, but most of the time, when we just adjust the language, we don't change the picture, we don't change the layout, we just adjust the language, bounce rate goes down. Why? Because people are understanding what they're looking at now, okay? Again, someone's looking for a house church. They come to our website. We're a 21st century church doing church in a version. What does that mean? I don't know. Must not be for me. Bounce out, okay? But if they say, we're a church that meets in the home, perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Tell me more. Okay, so you can be super obvious, a church in Floresville, like, okay, get it. There's a dozen of you. What makes it unique, right? You got to spend some time on that headline, on the image. If you can hook them in that first 1.7 seconds and get them to do something, you've got a better chance of getting them to do another thing. Okay, so um, don't make your website for yourself or your congregation. Don't speak in a language that only Christians can understand, unless you're a church for the church. If you're just a church to equip saints, perfect, fine, do that. I, but you're probably not listening to this show because you don't care about being the best known church. Um, you got to understand how the other side of the door speaks what they want, what they want to see. So you got to step back, stop, stop touching things, stop editing things, and just step back. 
and examine, think back to what people have told you, think back to what's been written on connect cards, think back to new membership classes. What was the reason that people chose to visit? What was the reason that they chose to stay? That's what needs to be on the website. Not disciples making disciples. It's what you keep hearing at new membership classes. This was finally a place that I felt that didn't reject me for who I am. This is finally a place I felt like I could be honest. Boom, there's your website headline. Loving you for you. Just as Jesus called us to do. Uh, Don't put that. Um, And focus on the transformation. I feel like I need a laugh track. (laughs) Uh, Focus on the transformation. Focus on, again, what is the end result? Not what are you going to come see, not even what you're going to experience, but what are you going to leave with? That's going to be huge. You do that, you'll see a lot more people clicking through your website to learn more, and you'll see a lot more people come to church. Okay? Remember this. You have to get their attention first. And that's what happens when they click on your website. You've got their attention. That doesn't immediately lead to a visit or engagement or connection. Okay? What follows attention, to quote Myron Golden, is intention. Meaning, first you got their intent, uh, attention, then, they, then you need to get them to intend to change, intend to do something about it. Right? How many times have you talked to someone that's overweight and they're like, look, I love you. And I'm not going to tell you to do keto. I'm not going to tell you to do Weight Watchers. Just do something, right? How many times, pastors, have we told our congregation, you don't have to pray the perfect prayer. Just talk to God. Do something. That's the point of our website. It's not just to get attention and invite, but it's to get attention and to show them there is something that needs to change. You are where you are because you've been in bondage where you are. And to break that bonds, obviously, you're not the one to do it. Christ is, and he's waiting for you here to experience him in fullness, in person, in community. Okay, that's how you generate intention. And then after intention, once they decided to do something, hopefully they've decided to do it with you, then comes action. Attention, intention, action. I wish that would flow a little bit better, uh, but maybe I'll figure it out later. Attention, intention, action. Okay, so first you've got to capture their attention when they land on your site. You've got to get that bounce rate under 40%. That means you're on the right track. And if you don't know what that is, that means you got to call me, 832-861-7654. Um, and then once you get their attention, you've got to get them intended to change. Share with them what's possible within your church. Oh, that does look good. I need to do something about this. And then get them to take action. See what to expect. Preview a service. Fill out this connect card. Uh, tell us how we can serve you. Ask me a question in the web chat. Do something. Okay? That is the secret to being engaging and generating engagement online to lead people along a path. The same way we have a discipleship pathway in our church. We have one, two, three things we know. We, when you visit the first time, then you visit the second time, then you plugged in, become a member. Or if you're Baptist, visit the first time, visit the second time, visit the third time, leave for three months, come back again, come back again, rededicate your life, uh, come to new membership class, and then get plugged in. <laughs> okay? Right? We all have our own little thing. But the same way we have a discipleship pathway, you need to have an online guest pathway. That's how you convert online guests to in-person visitors, or excuse me, online visitors to in-person guests. All right. And that's, that's the, you got to generate a path that way. And it doesn't start with your website. It starts on Google. It starts in a Facebook ad. If you wait people to come for you, you're just going to get people looking for a church. If you want to actually reach the lost, you got to go where they are, seize that attention and point it to Christ and show them how you can guide them along the way. All right. And to do that, really, it starts with our definitive church marketing consultation. In that consultation, we look at what you've done, what you've tried, where you need to go, where the biggest opportunities are, where the biggest strengths are, double down on this, stop trying to work on this. Here's what's going to fill that gap. Whatever your goals are, the definitive church marketing method can help you get there with ease so you can focus on people and not software. The last thing I want is a pastor to spend more time behind a computer screen than in front of people. Okay, so uh, novichurchmarketing.com, you can apply for a consultation there. It is free if you pass the application process. It is complimentary. It will probably change at the end of the year. So be aware of that. Uh, It's it's complimentary right now. It's free. 
but I probably will start charging with it because they are taking up a lot more of my time. And I'm the, I'm the one that does them. Uh, let me leave you with this. If <laughs> I have nothing wrong with the KJV, I'm an ESV guy and, and, uh, NLT and new KJV guy, right? Those are the three translations I like NLT, new KJV, but primarily ESV. But imagine being an e, a, K, a, a, a KJV church. Man, all these letters are hard to say right after. I'm going to have a BLT after this. Um, imagine being a KJV church, which, fine, whatever. Um, and you went out and you talked, KJV. You went out and you talked. Oh, is, 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 is it doth time for dinner? I don't know, think he's doth, but how are thou? Oh, my wife, I love thee. <laughs> right? You wouldn't talk like that. Okay. You, you, it doesn't fit our language. Normal, normal English, right? You may read it that way. You may experience it that way. That may be how, how God reveals himself to you and more power to you, but you don't speak that way to the world because they won't understand you. They'll look at you weird. They already look at us weird. We don't need to give them another reason that we don't have to. And so in the same way we don't we may read KJV, we don't go out and speak it that way. And in the same way you and I have a certain way of conversing on this side of the door, we don't go out of the house and talk to others about that. When we leave the house, the number one priority is evangelism, right? As a part of the discipleship process. I get that. The website, unfortunately, we keep that inside the house, but that is aired out to the community. And in the same way, we need to have our biblical disagreements inside the house and not take out and air our dirty laundry out in the community, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. We need to make sure that our assets that are outside, our online presence, are accessible and actionable to the outside world, to people that know that feel the call of God or know something needs to change or coming across a new season in their life and they want something different. They need to understand, feel understood, and know what to do when they visit you online. That's what this is about, not just for Christmas, especially for Christmas, but any event. Can you be found? Can you be seen? Can you be understood? And can you help them feel understood? You do these three things. You will see more people connecting with you, engaging with you, You'll be able to make more disciples like you're called to do.